Hey everybody, it's Teresa. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to make a necklace and a pair of earrings today, and I'm going to use some of the beads that came in the most recent curated bead box, the one for July 2024. It's called My Summer Garden. I'll put a link in the corner of this video and in the description box below to the unboxing video I did for this subscription in case you want to watch it where I go over everything that came in the box. I have a coupon code. It's Teresa35, and I'll put it on the screen here and in the description box below, along with a link to the page to sign up for this subscription if you're interested. The coupon will save you 35% off your first box if you sign up. And here I have the 10 millimeter yellow swirl marble style glass beads that came in the box. And here I have the 8 millimeter red blossom spray glass beads that came in the box. And here I have the 22 by 18 millimeter butterfly ladybug rhinestone gold links that came in the box. I've got some bead caps from my stash. I've got in here I've got a lobster clasp, some of the jump rings that came in the box, one 8mm jump ring from my stash, four 2x2 two two crimp tubes, and four wire guardians. This is going to be a double strand necklace. I've got a couple of pieces of chain from my stash, and then a shorter piece of chain to use as an extender. And then I've got a ball head pin and one of the uh, 8mm beads that I'm going to hang off the extender chain as a dangle. I think that's everything in there. <laughs> this is what I'm using for my earrings. Uh, I've got two of the 10 millimeter beads, two of the 8 millimeter beads, four bead caps, a couple of pieces of 22 gauge German style wire, a couple of ear wires, and a couple of ball head pins. I've got my Miyuki 11 0 Duracoat galvanized gold seed beads that I'm going to use to space out the beads got the bead stringing wire that came in the box and my bead stopper. I'll be using my chain nose pliers, my round nose pliers, my tweezer pliers, both pairs of my bent chain nose pliers, both pairs of my crimping pliers, both pairs of my cutters, and I already used my memory wire cutters to cut my chain. And I've got my little New Orleans shot glass to put my wires in. He's getting full. I've got to empty him. <laughs> I think that's everything. I'll Try to find links and put links in the description box below to everything I'm using that didn't come in the box. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, string up my strands so y'all don't have to wait while I do that. And then when I come back, I'll show you what my design is and I'll crimp it. So hold on, I'll be back. Okay, I've got one of my strands, my longest strands strung up here. And if y'all hear that, it's raining really, really hard here. <laughs> Uh, I've got 11 OC beads between all the beads, and I've got bead caps around the larger beads. I've got six of the 8 millimeter beads, one of the 10 millimeter beads, one 8 millimeter bead, five of the 10 millimeter beads, one 8 millimeter bead, one 10 millimeter bead, and six 8 millimeter beads. So now I'm going to crimp. Put my crimp tube on here. And my wire guardian. Come down the other channel of my wire guardian. And back through my crimp tube. I'll hold my wires apart so the wires don't get crossed in there. Because when I crimp, I want both of my wires to land in their own little channel, and they won't do that if they're crossed. I'll try to hold them apart. Now I'm going to take these crimping pliers and I'm going to use that part that has the tooth. Lay the tooth on top of my crimp tube. Squeeze. 
that puts each wire in its own little channel. Now these crimping pliers have three half circles at the top. I'm going to go in the middle one because that's the one for the 2x2 two two crimp tubes. I'm going to lay my crimp in there. Squeeze. Give it a good tight squeeze. I'm going to tug. That's good. So now I'm going to cut off my extra wire. Push all this down and crimp this side. I'll put my crimp tube on here. Another wire guardian. And then the other channel of my wire guardian. through my crimp tube. Make sure my wires are not crossed. Now I'm going to hold on to my wire guardian and pull my wire through because I have left myself a whole lot more wire than I needed. <laughs> and I like to try to go through a bead on this side if I can to get my hands out of the way and to center the last or the bead, uh, the wire guardian over the last bead. So I'm going to pull that through. Try to keep everything from being crossed. Hold on to my wire guardian and pull my wire through. Okay, now I want to make sure there's no slack in my piece, but I don't want it to be too tight either. So it's too tight and stiff it won't drape well and I usually just leave it curled up like this and that keeps it from being too tight so I'm going to try to hold on to all this and get my hands out of the way I'm going to take that part with the tooth again I'm going to lay the tooth on top of my crimp tube squeeze I'm going to go into the part with the half circles again. Lay my crimp in there. It always slips around on me on this side. does not want to cooperate on this side. It always <laughs> slips around on me. Okay, now I'm going to squeeze. Give it a good tight squeeze. There we go. Now I'm going to tug. That's good. So now I'm going to cut off my extra wire. So that's going to be my longest strand. So hold on, I'll string up my shortest strand and I'll be back and show you what it is. Okay, this is my shorter strand and that first strand, the beaded portion measured about eight inches and this one measures about six inches. I usually put about an inch and a half to two inches difference between the strands when I do a double strand necklace. So here I've got the uh, same thing, 11 O's between all the beads bead caps around the 10 millimeter beads. I have three 8 millimeter beads, one 10 millimeter bead, one 8 millimeter bead, five 10 millimeter beads, one 8 millimeter bead, one 10 millimeter bead, and three 8 millimeter beads. So I'm just going to crimp this one off camera because I'm going to do it just like I did that one that I already did. And then when I come back we'll 
put it all together. So I'll be back. Okay, I've got both of my strands crimped now. So now I'm going to put them together. And I got a couple of extra 8mm jump rings from my stash out. I was going to put these together with the jump rings that came in the box. But I decided I wanted some bigger jump rings to uh, maybe keep the beads from being too crowded against each other. So I've got an 8mm jump ring. I'm going to open it up. And these double strand necklaces always confuse me. I end up getting them twisted. <laughs> but I'm going to try not to this time. I'm going to put both of them on my 8mm jump ring. Close it back. Well, that one's not long to close back. There it goes. Make sure to get it closed back really well. Now I've got another 8mm jump ring. I'm going to do the same thing on this other side. Close my jump ring back really well. See that twisted around, and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I've never been able to figure it out. not laying right. You can take this out off and try to do it differently. If I can find the slit in my jump ring, there it is. Okay. I really don't know what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> I'll try putting my inner one on first and switching hands and put my outer one on and see if that helps. Close my jump brain back. I think that helped. I have no idea why, but I think it did. <laughs> so now I've got two of the jump rings that came in the box. I'm going to open one of them up, attach it to my jump ring, and attach it to my link. Close my jump ring back really well. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Attach to my jump ring. Attach it to my link. Close my jump ring back really well. Okay, 
Okay, so there's what I've got so far. So now I'll get my chain and everything and put it on. So I'll be back. Okay, I've got the rest of my findings I'm going to put on here now. I have a couple of pieces of chain that are about five inches each. So I'm going to take one of the jump rings that came in the box. And open it up. And put my chain on here. And the other side of my link. <laughs> I was so proud of myself. I hadn't dropped anything yet. I thought I was going to get through this whole thing without dropping something. Okay, now I'm going to put this on the other side of my link. Close my jump ring back. I'll do the same thing on this other side. Hopefully without dropping it. Huh. I shouldn't have said that. I jinxed myself, didn't I? really hard here. Well, shoot. Okay, well. <laughs> okay. Third time's the charm. Close one jump bring back. There we go. <laughs> okay, now. Now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to take another one of the jump rings that came in the box. And open it up. Put on my lobster glass. And this side of my chain. Close my jump ring back really well. Now this is an 8 millimeter jump ring. I'm going to put on the other side. And I have a little piece of extender chain here. It's about two inches. Close my jump ring back really well. So. I'm even less coordinated today than usual. Okay, so that's what I've got so far. So, uh, hold on, let me get my uh, head pin and everything and make a little dangle to go off the extender chain. So I'll be back. Okay, I've got a ball head pin and one of the little 8 millimeter beads now. I'm going to make a little dangle to go off my extender chain. So I'm going to take my pliers and go to the very tip of the pliers. Bend the wire over at a 90 degree angle around those pliers and put them in the crook of the bend. Around those pliers facing me. Bend the wire back until it hits the bead. Rotate the pliers till they're facing the table. Take this part under here until it hits the bottom of the tool. Kink the wire back until the loop is centered over the bead. Like that. 
Then I'm going to take my bent chain those pliers and hold on to my loop. Nope. I almost forgot. Y'all knew I was going to forget, didn't you? <laughs> I'm going to open my loop. Thread on my extender chain. Now I'm going to close my loop. Now I'm going to take my bent chain those pliers and hold on to my loop. Try to hold my chain back out of the way. Bring this part down. I'm going to take my other pair of bent chain those pliers and start to wrap. I'll make sure to get that first wrapping under the bottom of the loop. And not over the top of the bottom of the loop. Just wrap till there's no more room to wrap. And now I'm cut off my extra wire. And now I'm going to take these crimping pliers. I use the little half circles at each end to tuck in the burrs when I cut off wire. And I'm going to tuck in my burr. So there's my little dangle. And there's my necklace. So hold on, I'll get my stuff together and make a little pair of earrings. So, so I'll be back. Okay, now I'm going to make a really simple little earring. I've got a ball head pin here. And I'm going to take uh, my bead cap and my 10 millimeter bead and my bead cap. I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to go to the very tip of the pliers. Bend the wire over in a 90 degree angle. Around those pliers, put them in the crook of the bend. Around those pliers facing me. Bend the wire back until it hits the bead. Rotate the pliers till they're facing the table. Take this part under until it hits the bottom of the tool. Kink the wire back until the loop is centered over the bead. Usually stands my little wire almost straight up. I'm going to take my bent chain those pliers and hold on to my loop. Bring this wire down. Take my other pair of bent chain those pliers and start to wrap. Wrap till there's no more room to wrap. I'm going to take my cutters and I use a different pair of cutters for head pins and eye pins and craft wire than I do for bead stringing wire. Cut off my extra wire. Take my crimping pliers and tuck in my little burr. I'm going to take my piece of 22 gauge German style wire. This is about three inches, I think. I'm going to go down about an inch. Bend the wire over at a 90 degree angle. Around those pliers and put them in the crook of the bend. Bend the wire back until it hits the tool. Rotate the pliers till they're facing the table. 
this part under here until it hits the bottom of the tool. Kink the wire back until the loop is centered over the wire. And I'm going to open my loop and thread on my little dangle I made here. Close my loop back. Take my bent chain nose pliers and hold on to my loop. Bring this wire down. Wrap the short piece of wire around the long piece of wire. About three times. I take my cutters and cut off my extra wire. Take my 8mm bead and put it on here. Take my pliers, go to the very tip of the pliers, bend the wire over at a 90 degree angle, around those pliers and put them in the crook of the bend. Bend the wire back until it hits the beads. Rotate the pliers till they're facing the table. Take this part under until it hits the bottom of the tool. Kink the wire back until the loop is centered over the bead. Like that. Take my bent chain nose pliers and hold on to my loop. Bring this part down. Other pair of bent chain nose pliers and start to wrap. Just gonna wrap till there's no more room to wrap. I take my cutters, cut off an extra wire. these crimping wires and tuck in my little burrs. And now I'm going to take my ear wire and open it up. Thread on my little earring. Close my ear wire back. There's my little earring, so I'm going to make the other one off camera, and then I'll get everything laid out, and I'll be back, and we'll see what I've got, so I'll be back. Okay, there's my necklace and pair of earrings made with some of the beads that came in the most recent curated bead box, the one for July 2024 called My Summer Garden. Uh, like I said, if you're not subscribed to the box and you decide you want to be, that coupon code will save you 35% off your first box if you sign up. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate those of you who have subscribed to my channel and watched my videos and liked and commented on my videos. I have a website where I sell my jewelry. It's Teresa's Handmade Jewelry, and I'll put a link to it in the description box below in case you're interested, along with a link to my Facebook, Instagram, and my email. If you haven't, I'd really love it if you'd subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload a new video. So until next time, I hope y'all have a great day. Take care.